<gasps> Just like the old days, hey everybody, it's Conrad from ConradRocks.net, and we're continuing the series of our Bible study in Corinthians. Uh, I have my lovely wife, Susan, and we're coming to you from Como, Mississippi, in the Ephesians 6 compound. How are you, Susan? I'm doing good. Good. It's nice not to have to go to work. Well, not that work. I get to do kingdom work, which is always more fun. Amen. I've been chewing gum as trying not to eat food. It's not working. And then I noticed I, I've been smacking on camera. I interviewed. Well, tell, tell chewing me. gum on cam. That's not tell, good. Tell, tell, <laughs> do the announcements and then we'll pray and then we'll do it. Okay. This past weekend was very, very busy. We did go out with Merge Memphis. Actually, we started out at the Memphis Union Mission Feeding the Homeless. That was on Friday night. Saturday, we went out with Merge Memphis to distribute the scarves and mittens and hats for the cold uh, for the homeless people in downtown Memphis. And that was awesome. Um, but yesterday was really the most awesome. We just basically woke up. We kept praying, what are we going to do? Because we just felt like God wanted us to do something, but we didn't know what that was. Uh, but Conrad said, make a sign. We had a some phone board and I made a sign that said free prayer and we went out and we I, I woke up actually dreaming about and that's interesting I always seem to wake up with these dreams I was dreaming about a um, RV park that was up here in Coldwater and I said I think we're supposed to go pray in that that RV park so we did it we took our signs we went out there and as soon as we hung the sign up a couple was driving by waved at us stopped and came straight over and asked for prayer I mean immediately so we were just kind of blown away and yeah it's really been a real prophetic weekend and then we got to pray again at Sardis Lake and then another one was downtown Batesville the Polar Express was there. We knew nothing about that. We just stumbled into it, and God said, go do it again. So we did. We put up our sign. People came right over, asked for prayer, and we just we just know those were divine appointments because we could not have possibly known anything about that. Um, anyway, it was a very interesting weekend, and so we're excited. We are going on a trip, and we're taking our signs with us. So stay tuned. We'll post them as yeah, we, we we're not going to post the prayers necessarily because that might not be. Um, we don't want to divulge anybody's personal business online, but we do want to offer ourselves in prayer. We want to pray for people while we're on our trip. So we'll let you know what happens. It'll be exciting. Amen. I'm trying to tell my grandmother or whatever. It oh, is. we also, oh, what, two more things. New Year's Eve at Joey's. Yeah. This is in, and there's also another one this at Solid Rock Assembly of God. So there's a couple of events now around here that you can go to on New Year's Eve. Uh, we encourage you to pray in the new year. And the 21 day fast begins January 1st, 21 day fast.us. You may tune in, sign up. This is a Facebook event page. Please join us in prayer for the church in America, for America, and for whatever else the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. We want to be in prayer the first 21 days of the new year. Okay. Amen. Just, just so you guys know, the format that we do this is um, we normally. We're recording, and this is for my YouTube um, followers, and for my, I have an app, the Conrad Rocks app. You can watch it there. Uh, towards the end, we open it up for, you can do questions and answers on the sidebar at any time, yeah. and uh, we deal with that. And at the end, at the end, I turn off the recording, we have open seating, so, yeah. It's not going to last too long tonight, because we had the most amazing testimony. Testimony ever. ever Luke is Bessie, ever since, and it's coming, yeah. Adam ate an apple. There's never been a better. I mean, it was awesome. I, I, have, <laughs> I have lots of good testimonies in the sidebar to the testimony. It's a great testimony. So. Su Susan and I, Susan and I, we, we, yeah. we kind of stumbled across him, and the Holy Spirit like lights it up. He just goes, This is a guy you need to pay attention to. Yeah. And uh, he calls it ranting. And we're like, Well, let me take notes. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's really. Really He's good really anointed and super sold out. You can just, yeah. his passion is contagious. So it's yeah. really fun. 
She, Krista yeah. took some notes. Man, follow him on Periscope. He's amazing. I know he just he has like two or three hour long Periscopes. He's on a surf shop. He has it. Well, I don't know if he has it. He's in a surf shop, and he'll just like talk. Well, because nobody's surfing in the winter time, you know. Anyway. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this technology that you have today that we can chew the word of God in real time with people all over the world. They don't have to hop in their cars and go to a building. Lord, we thank you that we can share the love of Christ all over the world in real time. Lord, if it's 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm feeling depressed, I can talk to somebody in the Philippines. I mean, Lord, I just thank you for this technology. Lord, may our tongues be the pen of a ready writer tonight. May we exalt your name with every breath because we owe you that breath, Lord. Every breath that we take, we should give back to you in praise, Lord. We pray that you're a hedge about us and that, that our minds are alert and uh, ready to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're doing 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And the reason we're doing this, for those that you don't that don't know, we're doing an attempt to do Paul's letters in chronological order is that correct it's paul's right? that is correct it's paul's letters in the new testament you who did you see once krista <laughs> you saw you saw luke and bessie really man that's cool uh, we're doing this and for those of you who don't know you you might notice that uh the the letters oh lucas on scope i thought she mentioned okay uh, wow. The letter, the letters, they go from large to small, so they're not chronological. So mm -hmm. a lot of scholars, a lot of scholars disagree, but we're just going with the average. You know, we think that this. Yeah, is, we just found a site and kind of went with uh, the major consensus. I'm not going to read all 20 verses. I'm going to read about nine or ten, and then we'll just talk about them because we're not going to do a whole hour. Here. Yeah. All right. Dare any of you having a matter? Against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Do you not know the saints will judge the world? And if the world, and if the world be judged by you, you are unworthy to judge the smallest matters. Know you not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are at least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother, go with the law. Somebody's making some noise here. Sorry. Making noise. Okay. I had to close the door. Okay, but brother, go with the law with brother and that before the unbelievers. Now, there, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law one and with another. Why not take the wrong? Why do you rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, you do wrong and defraud and that your brethren. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. And then he goes on to a whole list. So let's, before we get into that list, let's just start dissecting this. Straighten up, okay. Sue. Big Bad Braz tells you to straighten up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust mm -hmm. and not before the saints? Now, the deal is when he says the law, He's talking about the secular system. Right, going before the lawyers of the day. That's right. I'm going to make sure what this is. Just <laughs> That's right. To cure me here, it's not going to say Torah. I wonder if it's the like religious leaders, though, or if it's the Romans. Surely not. It's Crino. Wow, that's a good thought. Crino in the Greek means properly to distinguish, that is to decide mentally or judicially. So he's talking about other unjust believers. Mm, lost people. So who's running? Why, why can we not go as Christians in this context? Why can we not go before the unjust? Because they're unjust. <laughs> They don't have the spirit of God, which is the basis of our whole legal system. You notice that we have the Ten Commandments on on courtrooms and on steps and stuff like that. And they're trying to rip all that stuff off. Why? Because they're unjust. Have you ever seen and these people get voted in? That's true. 
you get voted in. Voted Voting in is a popular contest. You're not voted in by how righteous you are. Amen. Right. And another reason they do this. Now, why, why do people in the church go to unbelievers? Because the court system have a monopoly on force. They can make you do stuff at the end of a barrel. Uh, the power that the church has is they can say you're lying to the Holy Spirit and you can drop dead in the most mm -hmm. extreme case. Or the other case would be anathema or excommunication. You kick them out of the church. I, I think probably more importantly than just the world is lost. And when you go before lost people to solve your problems, you get death. I mean, their, their solutions are not really solutions. They may they may seem so in some ways, but they're not. But I, we live under a higher law. And the law that we live under as Christian, born again Christian, is the law of love. The, the Bible says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and to love your neighbors as yourself. And the standard is so much higher than the standard of the world. Uh, so if we're going before the world, yeah, we may get, quote, justice in the eye of the, in the eyes of the world. Uh, but what does that really mean? The Bible tells us, uh, and we're going to read about it in this, in this actual chapter, it's not a matter of being right. Or it's not even a matter of fairness. It's a matter of our relationship with our Father God. That's what really matters. So. I, I really think that's the thing we should probably focus in on as believers. It's not a matter of what's be most beneficial to us personally, but what matters in the kingdom that, that counts. This is why the suffer defrauded. You're already going there in your head. I can see. Yeah, I'm going there. Okay. That's okay. True. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Jesus himself says in Matthew 19:28, "Verily I say to you, mm -hmm. which have followed me in the regeneration." Shall the Son of Man sit in the throne of glory? You shall also sit on the thrones, 12 thrones, judging the tribes of Israel. Um, so he's talking about his disciples at that point. And, you know, where's he was talking about his disciples then, judging the world. And, you know, technically, the New Jerusalem comes down to the earth, and then there's people, you know, it depends on which, which, which eschatology you ascribe to. But yeah. the, the nations of the earth will go up to the New Jerusalem once a year. And if they don't go, then rain doesn't fall on them. So there is going to be a judicial system that got upon the government, upon his, his government will be upon his upon shoulder. His shoulder. There's, there's lots of prophetic stuff. So there mm -hmm. is government in the regeneration. So we'll be judging the new world. It will be a new world order. Yeah. <laughs> A totally different one from the one that uh, we're being. Yeah. And then he says, and if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? And I obviously go to Matthew 7, 1. You remember that meme? The meme where it says, judge not. And then somebody took the. Uh, no, that was funny. They, they black out the entire passage of scripture. And keep the two words, judge not. <laughs> it is, I really, and I harp on this, I harped on it last week. I, I really think that's where the church uh, messes up. We think we can't judge anything. So we just let the most ridiculous things go on and act like, well, it's not my place. I better not say anything. Well, it's somebody's place because the Bible tells us to judge right here each other. First, judge yourself, of course. That's that's the number one thing is to judge yourself in the light of God's word. And second is to let the Holy Spirit teach us. And, and we are going to be chastened as believers when we make mistakes because we all make them. And it's, it's, it's not a, a bad thing to be... To realize you mess up, it's a good thing. It means you're actually teachable, that you can be taught, that the Holy Spirit can mold you into uh, the son or daughter of God that God wants for you to be. So that's a good thing. We sometimes think of it as all negative. But we also need, there is a place for discipleship too, where people can learn from other believers and, and, and not have to take the hard path, but they can be taught. Uh, the wisdom of the saints is important. And that's part of what this Bible study is. It's a small part of it. 
but we hope that some people can listen to this and maybe glean some wisdom and understanding for themselves and maybe avoid some things that would cause them trouble down the road. Well, the spirit of truth is something that guides us in all truth. I mean, we can follow it as we read the scriptures. And there's a comment in the sidebar, Bella Tros, I can't pronounce your name. I know it, but okay. says, I have a hard enough time keeping the kids in line. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the deal is, as we follow the spirit, he guides us in the truth and we have to lean to the spirit. His ways are higher than our ways. As we mature in Christ, we learn these things. It's a mature, you know, you're not going to rule the world if you're splashing in milk still. You know, mm-hmm. or judge the world. I need to say judge. So, um, mm-hmm. Then he says, and if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Makes me think of Jesus saying, hey, for those who are faithful and little shall be ruler over much. Mm-hmm. The, the parable of the talents. Mm-hmm. The parable of whatever it was, but they were given like 10 cities, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and also think, um, well, it's very important what we do, even in the smallest thing. If you're, if you're guilty of stealing a pencil, you're, you're going to be a lot more, it's going to be a lot more easy for you to steal $10,000. So if you draw the line, if you draw the line in the smallest matters. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I think it, it, there's a lot of things that come to mind when I'm reading this passage. It's like, you know, number one, if, if there's children that are misbehaving or doing something, do we just let it go? You know, our own children even, do we just let it go? It's just, it's too much trouble. I don't want to, you know, we really should look at each other and say, you know, we are an example to the world. We're the Christians. You know, we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We're to love our neighbors ourselves. We don't need to be a stumbling block for other people. So there is a place to judge, and we need to be careful that we're doing it in love. We're not jumping on people on every little thing they, you know, that they do wrong. Let the Spirit of God guide and direct us. Uh, but I really think this is, a, this is a weakness in the church in general. We have a real tough time receiving correction. We have a real tough time giving correction. And and the Holy Spirit knows the best way for that to happen, but I do think there should be more of it probably in the church. Amen. All right, verse 3. I think you're breathing in your mic. Verse 3, know ye not we shall judge angels. How much more are the things that pertain to this life? Um, you know, what, what's interesting about the uh, the judging angels, you know, angels mess up. Look at them in two thirds of, I mean, one third followed Satan, right? And then, yeah. and then in Genesis six, the sons of God saw that the women were fair and they came into this realm and then they had little giants. So I think Peter or Jude, Jude says they left their first estate, you know? So even angels can make mistakes, but they didn't, they don't operate by faith. They're always, Jesus said, uh, suffer these little children to come to me because their angels always behold the face of the Father. Angels don't operate by faith. And we have to, you know, we have to by faith believe those exactly. things. But they're, they're in the heavenly realm. They see both sides. They see the earthly realm and they see the heavenly realm. And I'm like, why are we we're supposed to judge them? Because they make mistakes too. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, they obviously send a third of them followed Lucifer. That's true. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. They can even bring a false gospel. If you read Galatians 1.8, now this is interesting. Um, Paul warns us not to believe an angel. It says, but though we are an angel from heaven, from where? Yeah. From hell? From heaven. Preach any other gospel unto you which we, which we have preached to you. Let him be accursed. That reminds me of the beginning of some false religions. There were some angels that preached. Oh, yeah. A false religion in a couple of them that we should not follow. Angels are the source. That's true. Yeah. And the devil himself masquerades as an angel of light. So. Mm, amen. Mm-hmm. If ye then have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are at least esteemed in the church. There's people struggling with that. Um, he's He's basically... I read some of the commentaries on this one. At this time, they had the Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. They had a whole judicial system set up. Um, The Jews did. But it was wicked. Well, 
Yeah, but they, they I don't think it was exactly ordained. It wasn't in scripture. From what mm. I understand, I can just go on this. Uh, this Pharisees and Sadducees didn't just have the law that you saw written in the Bible, like in Leviticus, Deuteronomy, but they had added on top of that a lot more. Yeah. Uh, and they were basically, and of course, a lot of taxes and money had come into play too. I don't, if you remember the time when Jesus had cast out, had come into the temple and overturned all the tables with the money changers, there was just a lot of corruption in the church in general. So, yeah, there is wickedness in in the synagogues. So, right, they had the Sanhedrin. That's that's kind of what I was saying. They had mm -hmm. uh, seventy two elders, which resided in Jordan, Jerusalem. Then they had the little Sanhedrin of twenty five in large cities out of Jerusalem. Then they had the bench of three in every synagogue. Um, that's kind of what they had in place. Now this is a Christian church. And uh, he's basically saying from, from the commentaries I read, um, and I don't trust commentaries. I mean, just so you know. I mean, I, I well, they're they're also they're piecing stuff together based on well, anecdotal data usually. It's a translation thing too, like the Bible in basic English. Okay, sometimes I'll read. I hate doing this, but sometimes I do it. I'm like, well, I don't. I just don't get it in the King James. He says, why do you put them in the hands of those who have no position in the church? So after the comma here, it says, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church, period. Now, in the Bible in basic English, it says, why do you put them in the hands of those who have no position in the church? Question mark. So there was no punctuation at this time. And uh, the King James just assumed he was making a statement. Bible in basic English thinks he's making it question and so does the contemporary yeah yeah so um it makes like. it makes more sense to me um that he's asking a question why because, because the next verse in the next verse he says i speak to your shame is it so that there's not somebody wise among you that no not not one shall be able to judge between his brethren and keep in mind this was the corinth corinthian church and they both and they were both yeah. of wisdom they boasted yeah. of Well, they were, yeah, they had the Greek philosophers all around. So these would have been people schooled in philosophy, probably. Mostly. Amen. Um, now, here's another point. But brother goeth to law with brother and that before unbelievers. Yeah. Now, Jesus says a couple of things. If you have in Matthew 18, if you have a problem with your brother, go to him. Go to him privately. He gives you the formula. Go to him privately. And I it doesn't say just once, you know, plead with him. Then if he doesn't hear you, get a couple of couple other people. Mm-hmm. And it usually stops right there. Usually. Then, if he doesn't hear them, you're supposed to cast them out before the church. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's one side. That's if I have ought against my brother. You've sinned against me. You need to make this right. This is what Jesus says. Then he also says, if you stand at the altar and you're about to give your gift, and you remember, and who's who's bringing that to your remembrance? The Holy Spirit. The Holy, the Holy Spirit's mm -hmm. bringing it to your remembrance. Like, hello, you need to make this you right. Got a problem with this person. You mm -hmm. need to make this right. Then he says, leave your gift at the altar. Why is he saying that? Because your gift isn't acceptable until you make it right. And he says, you know, if if you don't forgive from your heart your brother and your trespasses, neither neither will the Father in heaven forgive you. So forgiveness is a very big deal and we're supposed to handle it ourselves the holy mm -hmm. spirit in us i mean it's you know right. we're supposed right. to handle it ourselves one of us knows between the two of us we know who's wrong yeah uh, the whole well, the holy spirit knows for sure so the holy if we're letting it, the spirit be you know if we're walking after the spirit then we will automatically 
of course, do the right thing. The court system is just a game, though. This is a scam to pull one over. It's a, it's a scam. And it's not a matter of what's fair either. That's something we have to remember that what's fair in the eyes of the world has nothing to do with God. Nothing. Because it wouldn't be fair in the eyes of the the world looks at things and says, oh, you have your rights. And you, we don't have rights, not in, Christ, not in the Christian faith. Our rights, we lay at Jesus' feet. You know, we, we lay that down. We, we accept that we're nothing without Jesus. So, yeah. Yeah, not, that's not saying a lot of Christians don't go to court and a lot of Christians don't find themselves involved in lawsuits. But I, there is a more perfect way, and, and we're going to learn about it later in this chapter. Love really is the answer. It seems like a cliche, but God said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbors yourself. If those two things happen, that'll, that'll take care of just about every wrong that can happen. You forgive. I, I, put, a link, you I put a link in the sidebar because this passage reminds me of this. There, oh, yeah. This is a true story, and it just shows you how... <laughs> Sophie Shaw, The Final Days, it's a German film. It's, it's uh, in English. And these are Christians that were against World War II, and they spoke out against the war. And they printed leaflets. And basically, they went to this mock trial. And uh, if you watch the movie, I'm not going to give it away, but it's a true story about the White Rose Movement, the underground Christian movement during the World War II. An amazing film. Amazing film. But one thing that, that comes to light here, you have the judge, he's paid by the state. You have the district attorney, paid by the state. You have the, uh, what's the other guy, the uh, defender, public defender? Public defender, paid by the state. Swears an oath and it's probably paid by the state. Then you have the jury, which is picked by all these state paid state oath people. And they're given free lunch and they're given and, and they a are. Token amount of money too. And, and they aren't paid. Christians because they're putting Christians on trial for speaking. <laughs> so I'm sitting here, I'm like going, you know, and when the camera, when the camera shows you this trial, you're like, oh my God. Wow, they captured it perfectly. Uh, so here we go. We're taking, now we're Christians, right? And we know pretty much what's up. We know the Ten Commandments. We know we have the mind of Christ. And we're taking this beautiful, moral, integrity, holy thing to unbelievers. That's casting pearls before swine. Yeah. Amen. True. So, yeah. yeah, what are we doing? And then he says, now, therefore, is utterly at fault among you because you go to law with one another. And the reason they do that is because they're selfish and they want their way. And they That's want right. their way with guns because guns is how this is going to be. They're going to throw you in prison or sue you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then he says, and this is your favorite verse. I mean, this is an epiphany you've had over the last year. Mm -hmm. Why not rather take the wrong? Why not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we... You have to kind of back up and look at the big picture. And Jesus said, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, it was definitely not fair. He did not deserve to be crucified. But he went to the cross because of love. He went to the cross. He suffered the wrong. And he did it in our place for our benefit. And what he's saying here in a much less severe situation is that if you are defrauded, if you are treated badly, Okay, <laughs> you've been treated badly. You've been treated wrong. What's more important, restoring the relationship with your brother or being right? And according to the Bible, restoring the relationship takes precedent over you being right. And we often want to manipulate, try to get people to do the right things. We, we try to put rules and enforce them, and, or we want to take them to court to get them to do the right things. And and that's it, there's just really not a lot of biblical support for that. I, I do empathize. I mainly empathize with women who are maybe in situations where their, you know, their ex husbands are not playing child support, and there's other people involved. It's really tough to just forgive and let it go. It's really tough. 
uh, especially if the thing's ongoing and the thing is still causing pain or hurt. But, you know, that God's prescription doesn't always make sense. But it, he's, he's telling us here, even when it doesn't make sense, just be defrauded. Why not take wrong? Just suffer. Be fra- it says that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God in, chapter, in verse 9. But, but throughout the Bible, it says, love covereth over a multitude of sin. Our sin was covered by love. You know, the, the, the measure of forgiveness that we give out is going to be given back to us in even greater measure by the Father in heaven. So that's a hard teaching. Yeah, <laughs> How many people teach you know what? That? You know what it is? Let me tell you. Let, let's, let's look at it from another angle. The rich young ruler. Jesus said, you know, he, he kept all this stuff, but he said, one thing you lack. Go and sell everything, give to the poor, and come and follow me. Now, when he didn't follow him, it says, for he had many possessions. It wasn't necessarily the possessions, but it was his attachment to those possessions. And if we don't suffer to be defrauded, you know, it shows that we attach more value to our possessions than the person that we're in the argument with. You know what I'm saying? And love yeah. is from a perspective of love that we need to, to look at this. Yeah. Paul, there's too many of us putting so much value on our stuff. That's true. And I do think also we should point out this is not something you're going to do anyway. I, I mean, this this is really something for the Holy Spirit to do through us because – You know, there's when people are abused and mistreated, especially when they're children, it's tough to forgive. So I really empathize. But see, that's the beauty of it. The Holy, it says, faithful is he who calls you, who will also do it. God said he would do it. So I just want to point that out. Amen. In the big picture, we're on the other side of this short life everything, right. everything is recompensed you know the right. intentions is mine say to the lord um yeah. you know and jesus right. we have to we have to love even those that are persecuting us plus also you know bless are you and if you read the beatitudes these are attitudes the way to be, be that's right beatitudes attitudes for the way to be that's good yeah so um it says blessed are you that lack because you're going to be filled Bless you that hunger and thirst for righteousness. You should, you. So you're blessed while you're going through it. And it's a measure of faith. Amen. It's that that's he's giving us a measure of faith. Amen. Um it's eight o'clock. Let's pray out and I'm gonna turn off the recording and then, then we can answer the questions and we'll talk. I'm gonna talk for like 15 minutes. I'm kind of talked out. So okay. so we'll, we'll pick up next Monday on verse nine, because that one's gonna be gnarly oh yeah verse nine we'll get into the amen second half of the chapter okay. heavenly father lord we thank you for relationship or we thank you for people that are hungering and thirsting for relationship with you lord please pierce through all the confusion mm-hmm. All the news, which is a distraction, mm. all of the shopping, all of the music. And Lord, let all that dust just fall to the ground and let us hear that still small voice that says, this is the way. Walk in it. Lord, as we read the scriptures, Father God, let the spirit of truth guide us into all truth. But we pray for divine appointments for those people in this lab right now. We pray that they can fellowship and link arms with an army of believers that are on fire and have a passion for restoring America, restoring their community. And for all this, it starts with repentance of the personal repentance and repentance of the home. Lord, I pray that it's not, we don't want to repent because we're gritting our teeth and we think we need to get rid of stuff. 
Lord, but it's because we're developing a relationship with you. Call us higher, Lord. We don't want to just get saved just to get into the door of the new Jerusalem. We want to move. We want to jump into your lap, Father God. Show us the, the things you said you will show us great and mighty things to come, things that we don't know. Lord, call us to that level of relationship where we can see and enjoy those things, those secret things. Lord, in your word, it says it's the honor of God to conceal a matter, but it's the honor of kings to seek it out. Lord, we hunger and thirst for those things that you've hidden in your word. Reveal them to us, Lord. Light our hearts on fire to take, take the mission that you've given us and to run the race that's set before us. Lord, I pray that you show each and every person <coughs> a glimpse of their destiny. <clears throat> Excuse me, a glimpse of their destiny, Lord, that they can reach through, to pierce through the, the veil that the devil has been trying to cloud. The devil's been trying to throw dirt on their dreams, Father God. I pray that, you know, some of them are even saying, I might as well just give up and die. Lord, I pray that you give them that spiritual shovel that digs them out of the dust. To which we're, we're just the dust of the earth. The lies and accusations of the enemy. Sometimes even their own family members are bite back, backbiting them. Lord, I pray that I keep seeing gnashing tongues and gnashing teeth. Lord, I pray that those voices are quelled. Every, every tongue that rises up in judgment against them in the name of Jesus, they shall condemn. And that's the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Lord, I pray that we get we dust off ourselves, we get out of the pit that we've been, bit in with the pigs, just like the prodigal son. And we we are anxious to run home and jump into the arms of the Father. And we Lord, we thank you for the ring and the robe. Thank you for the ring and the robe. Lord, what can we do for you now? What can we do now, Lord? I pray that we're attentive in the spirit. Father God, I pray that you said your sheep hear your voice. Lord, I pray, and they know you, and they follow you, and another voice they will not follow. Lord, I pray that we are keenly aware of the voice of the Holy Spirit, the, vo the, the Spirit of truth, and that you guide us into all truth, and you lead us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Father God, do that. Have your way in our lives, Lord. You let us get so excited and impassioned and emboldened about you that other people just have to ask, what is up with you? And we'll say, it's Jesus. Amen. 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 Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to read your word. And I pray, Lord, that as the spirit has moved on the hearts of some of the people that are listening right now, Lord, I pray that that they will acknowledge that you are Lord and that they will take that leap of faith to trust you in that relationship that has caused so much pain and hurt in the past that they will let it go and put it in your hands and that you will give them supernatural ability to forgive uh, so that the healing can begin in their life and that they can go beyond an ordinary existence into an extraordinary calling that you have in their life that the very thing that caused them the most pain and trouble will be the source of life that they give out to others and I pray that they will begin that journey today. That they will not put it off. And they will not listen to the voice of those who who rise up in accusation against them. That they will listen to your voice and follow you intently. And will begin to open the Bible and read the word and seek your face. And I just pray, Lord, that that all that's said and done here that will will be used to magnify and glorify you and and Lord just draw all people unto you help us all have the courage to step out step up and to step into the kingdom assignment that you've given us Lord be faithful even in the little so that those that you are calling and wooing Lord can can hear the good news of the gospel can hear the message of Jesus Christ and have their lives radically transformed. We thank you so much for this opportunity and we bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A couple of things before I turn off the recording. Uh, we didn't announce this, the 21dayfast.us, 21dayfast.us. 
Yeah. This goes to a Facebook event page. This is for those of you that are uh, aspiring to fast and pray for 21 days for America, the church, and our local areas. I'm going to be doing a 21-day periscope, uh, but other people are doing 21-day prayer calls and they're praying locally. If you're interested, just go to that 21dayfast.us page. Okay, and it goes to that Facebook event page. All right, God bless you guys. Till we meet again, dig deeper. Go higher.